Hey guys, so this video is on mass percent composition and formulas, both empirical and molecular. So first, mass composition. Well, the per percent composition of anything is just the, the part of the, um, the amount of the part divided by the amount of the whole times 100. For us, um, for compounds, the mass percent of an element in the compound is equal to the mass of that element in the compound divided by the total mass of the compound times 100. Easy. For example, um, let's say we have 2.798 grams of dichlorine monoxide, and in there we figure out or we do an experiment that determines there are 0 0.5151 grams of oxygen. What's the mass percent of oxygen in dichlorine monoxide? Well, we just take the mass of the oxygen, 0 0.5151 grams, divided by the total mass, 2.798 times 100, and it gives us 18.41% oxygen by mass. Now, if you know the mass percent or mass percent composition um, of a compound, um, or of anything actually, you can use it as a conversion factor, um, like this. Let's say you have a certain compound and you know um, that it's 12.99% nitrogen by mass. How many grams of that, um, how many grams of nitrogen are there if you have 3.141 grams of this compound? Well, in this guy is just, it's just straightforward dimensional analysis. So steps one and step two. Units of the answer, we want grams of nitrogen. Starting point, 3.141 grams of the compound. Only conversion factor we need in this problem is the mass percent composition. And the way we write this, that's the kind of the, the, the point of this example, is the way we write a mass percent composition as a conversion factor, just like this. If it's 12.99% nitrogen by mass, we can say that 12.99 grams of nitrogen is equal to exactly 100 grams of the compound. So this 100 is an exact number, it's, it's a definition. Um, so step, um, so that's step three, step four, and step five, um, convert the grams of the compound to the grams of nitrogen, making sure we get everything in the right place. And we end up with 0 0.4080 grams of nitrogen in that much of the compound. Now, if you know the formula of a compound, you can calculate its mass percent composition. And here's how you do that. Um, and what you do basically is this, is you assume that you have exactly one mole of the compound. You see that the percent composition of that compound is going to be the same no matter how much of it you have. If you assume you have exactly one mole, then you know the mass, of the, the total mass of the compound, that's just the molar mass. And you also know how much of each of the elements that are in there. For example, if we wanted to find the mass percent composition of hydrocyanic cyanic acid, which is HCN, um, all we do is we take the mass of hydrogen in one mole of that compound divided by the molar mass, the mass of one mole of that compound, times 100. Same thing for carbon and nitrogen. So in this example, there's only one hydrogen, so it's just one, you know, the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.008 grams per mole. So if we have one mole, it's 1.008 grams of hydrogen. Right? Because you see, there's one mole of hydrogen in one mole of hydrocyanic acid. If this was a subscript 2, then we would multiply this number up here by 2, or whatever that number is. But in this case, um, divide the two numbers, multiply by 100. Remember that 100 is exact also, guys. And we get 3.730% hydrogen by mass. Um, mass percent carbon, just the molar mass of carbon times the number of um, moles of carbon in one mole of the compound. In this case, it's 1. But if it was some subscript, we'd multiply this down here by that. Divided by the molar mass, the mass of one mole of the compound, and we get 44.44% carbon. And same thing with nitrogen, we get 51.83% nitrogen, all by mass. Um, when we add these numbers up, they should be very close to 100%. Sometimes because of rounding errors, or, or if this is experimental data, um, you know, um, sometimes it's a little bit off, but it should be very close to 100% when you add them up, then it is. All right, so next, what's an empirical formula? Well, it's just the smallest whole number ratio of the elements in a compound. Um, for example, um, this compound here, C2H4, ethylene, um, it, the smallest whole number ratio of the elements is one carbon to two hydrogens, right? We can divide both the two and the four by two, and we get CH2 as its empirical formula. Um, say, cyclohexane, or it could be a couple different compounds, C6H12. Um, again, the smallest total number ratio is also CH2. So, one thing that this points out, guys, is that 
if you know the empirical formula, then you still don't know what the actual, we would call molecular formula of the compound is, the true formula. But it's good information. We can do some things with it. Um, also, one reason why empirical formulas are important is that um, they're easier to determine experimentally than the actual molecular formula. Um, but they're a step in the right direction. <clears throat> so, if we know the mass percent of a compound, which we can get experimentally, um, then we can calculate the empirical formula. And see what that means is once we can calculate the empirical formula, we just you'll see we just need one other piece of information and then we can get the actual true or molecular formula. So here's how you um, calculate the empirical formula if you know if you're given the mass percent composition of a compound. And we use this example to illustrate the, the method. So let's say we have a compound and we know from experiment that it's 49.31% carbon, 6.897% hydrogen, and 43.79% oxygen, all by mass. Find the empirical formula. Step one, real easy. Just assume that we have exactly 100 grams, exactly 100 grams of the compound. Because you see the percent composition is going to be the same no matter how much we have. So we might as well make it easier on ourselves, right? Because, you see if this what this step does for us, if we assume we have exactly 100 grams of the compound, then these percents are how many grams of each element we have. So now we know we have 49.31 grams of carbon, that percent, 6.897 grams of hydrogen, and 43.79 grams of oxygen. You'll see why that's really nice. Because the next step says, find the moles of each of the elements. And if we know the grams, all we have to do to find the moles is divide by the molar mass. That's what we always do. So if we take the grams of carbon, divide by, this number is the molar mass of carbon, which I got from the periodic table, we see that we have 4.105 moles of carbon. Same thing with hydrogen, the mass of hydrogen that we have divided by its molar mass gives us the moles of hydrogen. Likewise, for oxygen, moles of oxygen. All right, guys, that's step two. Step three says, look at those three numbers we just got. Whichever is the smallest number, whichever, we have the, whichever element we have the least number of moles, divide that into the moles of the other elements in the compound. So in our example, we have the least number of moles of oxygen, 2.737. So all we do is we divide the moles of carbon, in this example, by the moles of oxygen, and the moles of hydrogen by the moles of oxygen. And we get these numbers over here. These are ratios. They tell us that in this compound, there's 1.4999 moles of carbon for every one mole of, mole of oxygen, and 2.4998 moles of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen. Now here's the thing, guys. We know we can't have a fraction of an atom. So the ratio of the moles is the exact same as the ratio of the number of atoms in the compound. So this is saying also, I, this is ex saying exactly, that there are 1.4999 atoms of carbon for every one atom of oxygen in, in this compound. Likewise, 2.4998 atoms of hydrogen for every one atom of oxygen in this compound. Now, the next step uh, tells us how to deal with that. Sometimes what happens in that last step, in step three, you get numbers that are all closer than 0.1 to a whole number. If they are, then that's good enough. Round to the whole number, and that gives the empirical formula, and you're done. But in this example, we're not closer than 0.1 to a whole number. We're farther than 0.1, or 0.1 or farther from a whole number. So here, this is when you do step, step four. Um, so in this case, as in our example, you find some whole number that when you multiply it over itself by both of those ratios that we got in step three, we get whole number ratios or closer than 0.1 um, to a whole number ratio. Now, what helps is if you, you recognize, you know, what easy fractions these numbers are close to. So, you know, 1.4999 is basically 1.5. And that's easy because 1.5 times 2 is 3, right? So if we take this times 2 over 2, that tells us there are 3 moles of carbon for every 2 moles of oxygen. Um, likewise, 2.4998 is basically 2.5. And we multiply that by 2 over 2. That gives us our whole number ratio. Now, this has to... Okay, when we have like two elements that we're doing this to, we have to use the same ratio. So one, one of them is we get 2 over 2 works, but the other one um, doesn't. 3 over 3 works. Then we have to find the smallest whole number ratio that works for... Or whole number that works for both of those. But in this case, we're lucky. 2 works for both of these. So that tells us that in our compound, when we multiply by 2 over 2, it tells us there are 3 moles of carbon for every 2 moles of oxygen, and 
2 times 2.5 is 5, 5 moles of hydrogen for every 2 times 1 is 2, 2 moles of oxygen. Or 3 atoms of carbon for every 2 atoms of oxygen, 5 atoms of hydrogen for every 2 atoms of oxygen. And that gives us our empirical formula. You see, back in step three, if we if these were whole number or co closer than 0.1 to a whole number, then we would have this information already, and we could just write down the empirical formula, because this tells us that there are three atoms of carbon for five atoms of hydrogen for every two atoms of oxygen. That's our empirical formula. We got this three from this, this five from this, and this two from this and this. And that's how you get the empirical formula from the mass percent composition. Now, let's say we need to know the molecular formula, because that's the true, the actual formula for the compound. In order to know that, to get that from the empirical formula, you need to know what the molecular molar mass is, or sometimes we just call it the molar mass of the compound. And all you do is this right here. You divide the molecular molar mass of the compound by the empirical molar mass. That should always be close to a whole number. Round to that whole number, multiply each subscript in the empirical formula by that whole number, and that gives you the, the molecular formula. Um, you see this, when we do this division, this has to be a whole number because the molecular formula is an, has to be an integral multiple of the empirical formula. It has to be because we can't have fractions of atoms. Um, <clears throat> so let's say in that previous example, we do another experiment and we find that the molecular molar mass of the compound is 219.212 grams per mole. Find its molecular formula. So when I say, by the way, when I say empirical molar mass, I just mean the molar mass of the empirical formula. So we're going to take the molecular molar mass, which we're given, what we find with an experiment, divide by the empirical molar, molar mass. The way I got this, guys, the 73.071, is I calculated the molar mass of our empirical formula, which was C3H5O2. So I took two to, oh, excuse me, 3 times 12.011 plus 5 times 1.008 plus 2 times 15.999, and add them all up, and that should give you this. When we do this division, we get really close to a whole number, 3. So all we do to get the molecular formula is multiply each subscript in our empirical formula by 3. So 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 times 2 is 6. So now we know that our empirical, I mean, excuse me, our molecular, or true formula, is C9H15O6. And that's all there is to it, guys.